It was um, muted. <laughs> okay. Aloha, thank you for joining us in the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival virtual kitchen for our Armstrong Produce Presents Cook and Drink Along with HFWF series. I'm Denise Yamaguchi, the co-founder and CEO of Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. Tonight, we get to cook a mouth-watering Southern-style seafood boil alongside a few of our festival favorites, Chef Michelle and Wade from MW Restaurant. And we'll pair it with ancient peach shell seeker Chardonnay made exclusively for Hawaiian Airlines first class menu. We're so honored to have our friend and Hawaiian Airlines master sommelier, Chuck Furia here tonight with us. He's one of the longest certified master sommeliers in the US and he'll be doing a special tasting of this exclusive wine offering. Thank you to Hawaiian Airlines for giving Hawaii Food and Wine Festival Home Cooks exclusive access to wine that's only available on the Hawaiian Airlines first class menu. Before we start, I'm excited to let you know that tickets to our 10th annual Hawaii Food and Wine Festival are on sale now. We're taking every precaution to ensure the safety of our attendees and other participants. This year, we will feature 20 celebrity chefs paired with our local chef talent to create much smaller dining experiences at our local restaurants. Your ticket purchase will support the restaurant industry as well as our visitor industry partners and other small businesses. For the full schedule and talent lineup, go to hfwf.me online and be sure to make a table reservation before we sell out. We have just announced a virtual Halloween party. HMAA presents Keiki in the Kitchen, dress up and decorate with HFWF. Keiki are invited to come and decorate with us on Saturday, October 31st at 3 p.m. Sign up your kids to reserve a cupcake kit and a The host muted everybody. Can you stay here? Okay. Um, next week, we'll be going on still with our next talk story in Pahana, Restaurant Trends 2021, reimagining the restaurant experience as well as our first mocktail event. Dietrich Insurance presents Hawaii's Best Mocktails, featuring HFWF mixologists and mocktails called mixologists. The mocktails come with small bites created by Chef John, Ma John Matsubara of Feast. Lastly, if you're loving these cook and drink alongs, we have one more on the calendar before our festival launches. On October 29, you can learn to cook the perfect steak with Chef Lance Kosaka. Jen Akro will then pair the steak with Maker's Mark bourbon crafted cocktails. A special thank you goes out to our presenting sponsor, Mark Taria and Armstrong Produce, who has made these virtual culinary and drink along experiences possible. And I'd also like to recognize Bob and Laurie Harrison, who are joining us tonight of First Hawaiian Bank, the presenting sponsors of the entire overall Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. Finally, I want to urge all of you to check out our new digital content platform, HashiLife.com, which features stories behind the many chefs, winemakers, mixologists, and others in our community who come together year after year to make our festival possible. I am pleased to now introduce our moderator and my good friend, Tanya Joaquin, co-host of Living 808 on KHON2. Tanya, thank you for being here. Thank you, Aloha. So happy to be here hosting the second Holy Food Wine Festival, Cooking Raising Along the Bad Plan, which is a living in a way to launch our show with the Food Wine, because that's one of the best places to eat and drink and feature a lot of nonprofits. So the Food Wine Festival combines the events of those worlds. And we have a great event for you. I'm sorry if you couldn't hear Denise talking about some of the Festival events coming. Can't it's hear it, Tanya. Different festival for the 10th year because of the times we're in, but you can go to the website and find out about the great trick or treat event they have planned for Keiki and a just announced mocktail event, too. So we'll have all those details for you on Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. Dot com. But I am standing here inside MW, and we are going to have the pleasure of working with the M and the W, Michelle Cartwheelka, 
at Wade Uyoka doing a seafood boil as well as some ahi poke nachos. Is that right, Michelle? Or ahi nachos? Yes, one of the favorites. If you're an MW regular, we're going to have that. But first, it is cook and drink along. So we have a special wine that Denise talked about that was chosen specially for this event by Master Sommelier Chuck Furuya. Of course, he's Hawaiian Airlines Master Sommelier, and he's picked something that normally you only get in first class. So we are definitely in for a treat tonight. Now, we want this to be interactive for you. So I'll be checking my screen here. I encourage you, A, to please mute yourself. We can hear all of us. I know that you're going to want to hear from Chuck, Michelle, and Wade, and hopefully me too, chiming in. But we also want to get your questions too. So the way to do that is to virtually raise your hand. It's like taking us back to our school days. But you can do that by going to participants, and there's a pop-up window down the bottom right. And if you raise your hand, I'll look in that. And so we'll have time to do a Q&A session. You can also use a chat button. Thank you for all of us telling that Denise was muted for a lot of that. So hopefully you heard the important part. But the big thing is that we are here to celebrate food and wine and local ingredients and to help out the restaurant industry. So thank you so much for joining us for this. Now, without further ado, I want to bring in the Master Sommelier first in Hawaii to do this. I think only 10th in the U.S. too. So he is the man to get your wine questions for. So we're going to start with a drinking. If you haven't already, maybe raise your glasses and join. So Chuck Furuya joining Hi, us here. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. So we see people at Zoom. Please keep your cameras on. Again, keep it muted, um, but you can ask the questions in chat or raise your hands. And tell me about this special wine and why you selected this for us tonight. Okay, so it's, it's a very involved story. So let me just we have try to That's move through it. <laughs> Okay, so I've been consulting for Hawaiian Airlines for a long time. The game changed. A new chapter was created when Hawaiian Airlines chose to go international, mm -hmm. you know, with Haneda, with, uh, with, you know, essentially Japan, Korea, et cetera. They chose to go international, so the game changed. So one of the tiers that they, they created was with all these famous local hotshot phenom chefs, right? Like Mark and, uh, I we mean, know, like Wade and quite a uh, few. Michelle. So, you know, it, it was changed the game. And, and the thought process from my point of view was that we have to show the best of Hawaii when we travel to Korea or Japan or wherever. Mm -hmm. And so we had to step up the wines as well. So uh, what we started to do was rather than buying wines that were cheaply priced or made from all these grapes purchased from everybody, we decided to create the wines instead. That must be a dream come true for you. Absolutely, it was. And, but it took a lot of work because, mm -hmm. you know, these small family owned wineries, they don't understand corporations and big business. So this particular wine comes from the Santa Margarita Ranch, which is at a thousand feet elevation in a very remote location. The 14,000 acres surrounding it is, is just countryside, you know, and it's owned by three ranching families. Two of them are actual cowboys. I mean, they ride horses. They, they tie their horses up. It's not, they're not fancy. That's rodeo this. country. Yeah, exactly. It so it's just, that's the kind of people they are. They, well, they own this land. They're stewards of this land. And they do all the things on their property just to make sure that the land pays for itself so nobody will feel a need to sell it off to some large box, uh, you know, corporate store or something like that. So they want to keep it pristine. So it took us four and my wife four and a half years wow. to uh, get to know these people in order to collaborate and mm -hmm. try to make a blended wine mm -hmm. with them that's suitable for Hawaiian Airlines, the foods that Wade and Michelle make and the other uh, the consulting chefs and make it light and crisp and you know uplifting for when you're at high altitude in a, in a closed um, environment like a plane and so that's where this wine came from that's so again a thousand feet elevation there's five distinct soil types it's interesting because the vineyard is up on a hilltop so it it's 14 miles to the ocean this way and right on the other side of the hill is the Cuesta grade so it's all this mm -hmm. cold air so it's one of the coolest spots in the Paso Robles Appalachian. So just as you know, because you're familiar with Central Coast, mm -hmm. Paso Robles is roughly halfway between San Francisco and LA. Yes. And while it's a, a pretty hot growing area, uh, this area, this specific uh, vineyard is a very cool spot for it. So we specifically chose the coolest spot and we did it, uh, we wanted to create a wine that was very fresh and alive and minerally, not fruit driven, not apple, pineapple, pear kind of characteristic, something about the soil so it had a true sense of place. 
So that's what this wine represents. It's effortlessly light and refreshing and thirst quenching. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to create it. Now, I just like to mention a little bit about the name. Uh, Renee awesome. Awana, who's one of the top people, as you know, at Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, we recently want to call the wine the Wandering Psalm. You know, In honor, some, yeah, but the Wandering Psalm. <laughs> but uh, we couldn't use that for some various reasons. So she came up with the name the Shell Seeker. So as you, as I mentioned to you, as you know, we have a uh, total of five grandkids, my wife and I. Three of them live on the North Shore, and I wish I could tell all of you viewers the kind of joy you see on a kid's face, the, the sense of wonderment when they find a shell on the beach, <laughs> you know? And so that's where this, the name of this wine came from, the shell seeker, that the sense of wonderment that we, we found something special. And specifically, it would go with uh, Wade and uh, Michelle's seafood boil so that it kind of acts like a lemon. When you squeeze a lemon over a seafood, mm -hmm. it refreshes your palate between bites. Because they have some sausage in there, because they have some chicken broth in there, it still has enough body to handle all that stuff with the lobster, with the shrimp, you know, the corn, the potatoes, etc. So we thought this would be perfect. And this wine is only offered on Hawaiian Airlines First Class Domestic. Okay. So we're, we're getting a treat tonight. I want yeah. to see if anyone has it open there. I want to see if they have that same oh, here, sense of wonderment. Oh, yeah, here, Yeah, please. Thank you. I would like to taste that. Stop your whining. <laughs> I see Bob Harrison like there. Hello. Hi, everyone. Give a little wave if you're having your wine. And if you have any questions, too, please feel free. You can see it's not oaky. It's not, you know, no. it doesn't smell smoky. It doesn't smell like vanilla, butterscotch. It's just fresh and minerally. It's not just apple, pineapple. And when you taste it, it's oh, very nice. uplifting on the palate. So that's what this wine intentionally is supposed to be. So we collaborated and fortunately came up with something like this A that I am very food. proud to be associated with Hawaiian Airlines and their vision on this. And also with the people at Ancient Peaks, you know, and the families that own and run that operation. You and really got your result. swirling. I need to get a little tornado going here. Cheers. 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 Cheers to everyone joining yeah, us. Yeah, cheers to you guys. Let's try this. Hmm. Yeah, it's so crisp and riveting and refreshing. I think this thing is wonderful. So hopefully this, uh, I think you, hopefully you'll enjoy it with the seafood boil tonight. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of good wine with the good food and makes you want to smile and enjoy yourself most importantly. Do you also enjoy finding shells? I do. I do. It's just, that sense of wonderment is infectious. I mean, you just, it just captures my heart. I want to see if anyone has any questions here. And okay, we had some coming up. Don't start, Chuck, or someone says, are you enjoying the wine? Cheers. Yes. Yes, I am. I'm going to pour some for Wade and uh, Michelle because they're giving me stink eye over there. <laughs> You know, people really enjoying the wine, especially right now. They're saying, you know, people are looking for good reasons to celebrate and cheers and everything. So we're glad to have that. Shoot. If anyone has a question for Chuck, please let us know. Yeah. In, in the meantime, for those of you who were kind enough to purchase the wine in support of the Hawaii Food and Wine mm -hmm. Festival, I hope you enjoy this glass. And I hope it, you know, the most important thing is that it's enjoyable. And then when you have it with the seafood boil of the MW restaurant, Hopefully it creates a more complete experience. And you know, this is a family owned restaurant. This is a family owned, I wanna make sure that you understand this is a family owned project. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes it even more special. So the combination of the two, hopefully creates some magic for, you, for those of you who are enjoying the wine and the food together tonight. Now, you said your wife worked on making the relationship there to get in. We stood outside the gate <laughs> for four and a half <laughs> years, waving at people and nobody would pay attention to us. And I, I wrote to everybody in the whole area, and we know a lot of people in the area, just to please introduce me to these people. Mm -hmm. And nobody could open, they're just ranchers, wow. they're just cowboys. It mm -hmm. took four and a half years for us to get to know these people. And now we're, we're really good friends. That's great. And how long has this been on Hawaiian Airlines? So this, this past spring was the first time we launched this. The one before it was a different blend from, from uh, the same vineyard, and it was called Los Padres. And now mm -hmm. we're segueing into the Shell Seeker. On international, we have a different set of wines. It's called 21 degrees latitude because that's where um, the, 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 the thing of where Hawaii is, yes. 21 degrees latitude. Mm -hmm. So we have a Cabernet blend and a Chardonnay blend that we also collaborated to, to make. And then on um, all the airlines coach, they sell half bottles. And I, I, I work with a family owned vineyard up in Washington state. Mm -hmm. 
just I just dropped in one day. They didn't have, you like they had no idea. I do family. I think it's so important. You ambush them. <laughs> yeah, and, and more so today than ever. We got to support these family-owned things too. Yeah, you know, especially whether what's happening in uh, Napa right now. Too. Absolutely, it's pretty crazy what's going on right now. All right, I'm gonna take a look and see if we have any questions here. Bahamas and Hawaii, 21 degrees. Thanks, JB and Liz, commenting that. Are there any bottles still available to buy after tonight? Yes, yes, there is a yes. So comment, Hawaii Food and Wine Festival team will let you know. Can, can I just add one more thing before I forget? So here I am saying I collaborate on this thing I do. It's a joint venture. And the thing that's most exciting for me about this project, it's a collaboration of four entities. There's Southern Glaciers Wines and Spirits and the visionary the person who runs that thing, Warren Sean, mm -hmm. he helps to make this happen. Then there's the people at Ancient Peaks, you know, that... Uh, that uh, allow us to come in there and just like, yes. it'd be like me coming in the kitchen and tell Michelle and, <laughs> and Wade, this is how I want to cook the seafood boil. So they're a very integral part of this thing. The third part of, of the whole thing uh, is Hawaiian Airlines. You know, for them to be open to us coming up with something that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. And it takes constant work from all four parties to make this thing happen through synergy and collaboration, I think it's really important. So I want to make it clear that it's just not me. It's just a collaboration of four different entities that makes this magic happen. Oh, it does. And, and it makes it special too. for Hawaiian Airlines. Not like the other airlines where we have all these other kind of ones. This thing is made for Hawaiian Airlines exclusively. It is great. And they do a great job of, first of all, supporting Hawaii as a culinary destination exactly. with the festival and having a lot of our rock star chefs exactly. that prepare the menu, including Wade Uyoka. We're going to be in there in right. just a second. How do you get the technique? Does anyone know that? I, 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 my wrist is not working. So I, I'll give you a clue. Okay. So when you're, when you're going to a cocktail party or something, you got to learn how to sw swirl. You just hold this thing. You, you practice at home with water. Mine's you just swirl. And all you do like this, if you don't have a lot of knowledge of wine, no. you just swirl it like this and you just go like this. Then you and, look and like you the close throat. your eyes and you just nod your head like this, like you're contemplating. You just go like that so nobody will bother you no one will ask you what you think about the wine if they do just say i, need I just need it i just need it to uh open up a little i need it to breathe that's all you have to say and then you, you walk around like all night you just go like that that's there is a i know we have some wine connoisseurs here let me see if we have any questions over here yes bottles tell us a joke chuck do you have a joke Oh no. This is going to take you back to the days where you had to do some impression. Don't, I don't have. <laughs> Tell us a Roy off, Yamaguchi story. Oh no. <laughs> you know, when you're in Las Vegas, things stay in Las Vegas or something like that? I don't want to talk about uh, all of our past escapades as, as a group. Why? Are there skeletons? Then? No, it's just, oh, it's just okay. personal. It's just I'm a just good, kidding. fun thing where people just got <laughs> together and had fun, you know? That's good fun. That's I know it. you guys go way back too. All right, if anyone has any questions, we can't get a joke. We'll see if we can get one later, but I think we need to give Michelle and Wade some wine. Oh, I got one. For, I, I, oh, wanted to say, I wanted to say something to you. Yes. Some people say this wine smells like up dog. That's the only thing. Try smell it. it. Smells like up dog. What do you mean? No, it smells like up dog. What? So you got to ask me what's... What is up? Okay. Uh, what's <laughs> up dog? There you go. <laughs> what do you think guys? No? Okay. Well, two people. Okay. <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> Sorry, I was messing up the punchline there. Thank you so much, Chuck. There you go. All Thank right, you. let's see. Someone's laughing there. Chuck, we love you, says Marty. Good one, Chuck. Is a dog in the kitchen approved for this event? That's what JB and Liz says, too. So. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you all. It's, it's nice you. to see you or hear from you or read, read from you. So, Keep the comments co uh, coming, and thank you for supporting Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. Absolutely, and we're going to get to the cooking section now because of Wade and Michelle have been waiting in the kitchen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Toast. Cheers. Thank you. Always a pleasure. You're such a professional. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you I'm working on that. Too. I'm going to spill this yeah. here. I'm learning. <laughs> All right, stand tight. Keep your questions ready for our go. chefs coming up. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you.
All right, again, mahalo to Chuck for the wine expertise, the jokes, and uh, for all he does to support local wineries and family businesses. I'm in the kitchen now. We have the, the glasses of wine, the shell seeker for Wade and Michelle. Thank you. Cheers. cheers. And I also want to give a special cheers. Let me have a sip first. Cheers to Jonathan and Kristen. They're joining us. It's their 12th anniversary. So what oh, a way wonderful. to celebrate. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Cooking and <laughs> drinking along. And I know you have something special prepared for us. And I might have just seen this move. Is yes. That very <laughs> fresh, fresh <laughs> seafood. Tell me what you're cooking up, Wade. So we got a um, southern style seafood boil. Uh, we got, we're going to, this is a lobster from uh, Kona Kona and the Big Island. And you got some fresh clams and kawaii shrimp mm. uh, with some potatoes, carrots, uh, corn from Twin, Twin Bridge Farm, and um, Portuguese sausage and andouille sausage. This is great. Seafood yeah. boil. But do we actually want to start with yeah. Yes. One of the favorites that people would probably go crazy if you took this off the menu. <laughs> so, well, first off, you know, um, people who picked out their uh, kits today, um, you should have got two uh, deli containers of the chicken broth. Or, um, and so it's a little concentrated, so you might want to start by adding, uh, boiling the, the, placing the, the chicken broth in the pot. Um, add two more delis of water to um, dilute it a little so that we, and then you're going to have enough, you should have enough liquid to, for the seafood later in a second. Um, you can start that, go ahead and start. Uh, bring, How long should this process your, take? Do, um, do the, the whole process of once we start adding the seafood will take about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, but you want to get the, the broth, uh, bring it up to a boil already. So okay. now we do this um, pulky. All right, great. So this is one of our signature uh, items on our menu. Um, so we had ahi poke nachos. Mm. So we got fresh ahi. We're just going to add some onions, green onions. And this is a sauce of uh, kochujang, oyster sauce, and sesame oil. Kochujang, a little yeah. bit of a Korean yes. play on this. <laughs> so it's a Korean chili, chili uh, mm. spice paste. Um, first off, we're just going to add a little salt to the ahi. So I like to add it in the beginning to so you actually season the ahi. Like Season a sea the fish. Salt yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you get the onions. Green onion. Mix it a little. And someone asked how much extra water. Susan, was that two containers of this? Yes. Okay. I get that. I'll two be Two containers your of the uh, two containers more water to okay. add. How is it asked, do I kill my lobster first or just boil him alive? We're going to boil him alive. All right, mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the, the sauce we just added. And then we're going to just toss the mix the, mm, to finish the pulque. Then for presentation, you're going to, we have a ring, but at home, I know most of you probably won't have a ring like this. Is there a hat? Um, can you use a can or something? You can use a small bowl. Uh, and do something similar, or if you want to make like a, a ring like this with a piece of foil, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but luckily, we you know, for a restaurant, yeah, right, right <laughs> for tools. restaurant yeah, this is a avocado salsa. Um, we got fresh avocados from um, Mountain View Farms uh, with jalapeno, white onion, green onion, and um, it's seasoned with. Uh, lime juice, and ahi amarillo, which is a Peruvian chili, chili uh, paste. Mm. And, um, so two paste, kind of with the cochajong yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. So the first layer would be the avocado salsa. And then we're going to add the ahi poke on top. That's good. I, I almost thought that was wasabi for a second. I said, we're going to really <laughs> spice it up in here. Keep that wine handy. Oh, Susan says, you want to repeat the directions on the poke? I'm assuming she said. So the... For the, to repeat, mm -hmm. or for Su Susan, mm -hmm. the ahi, you want to first season with a little bit of salt and then add the onions and green onions. Give it a uh, toss it to m make sure all the fish is seasoned. And then um, add in the sauce, which is a uh, kochujang and oyster sauce with a little bit of sesame oil. And then you just finish by mixing, mixing thoroughly. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, you really want to lightly toss because you don't want to mash up the fish too much. Mm -hmm. 
And the um, avocado salsa again was the avocados and which other ingredients? Avocado, um, onion, green onion. Uh, we put also put the uh, green jalapeno. Okay. A uh, little bit of lime juice and ajo mario. Ajo mario is the Peruvian uh, chili spice mix, spice paste, and then uh, salt and finish with salt. Great. Okay. So we got a little stack here. And then we're just gonna lift the ring off. Finish with the, this is bubuwa today, which is a Japanese style rice cracker. Mm -hmm. Those are fun. I think you've made it a dessert using that before, Michelle, yeah. right? Some yeah. fun things. That Gives a good picture. really good with chocolate too. <laughs> yes. A little garnish and then And chips. then I'll finish with the chips. So while I finish the dish with the chips, Wade is gonna start the seafood boil. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go step by step. And I think this guy might have heard what was happening. He's been kind of going <laughs> forward. So. It's I'm trying to run away. <laughs> so uh, you're- oh, Look at the smoke, here we go. Oh, the yeah. chicken broth should have came to a boil by now. And then you wanna turn it up to about like a medium, on medium. So we're gonna start with, uh, basically we're gonna time everything so that in the end, we're scooping everything out of the pot uh, all together. Um, so you, the, you're gonna start with the longest cooking item, which would be the lobster. Mm. It's gonna take about uh, nine to 10 minutes. And then the last, um, maybe about the four minute mark, we'll add the potatoes and carrots. And then in the end, we'll add the um, clams. We'll finish with the shrimp and the clams, and then the corn and the sausage. Oh, Sharon and Bill says their water is not boiling yet. Oh, so Anyone else need their water? Raise your hand so we can see if you, you need a little bit more time to get it ready. All right, we see people here. And as, as always, if you have a question or anything, about to see how'd your poke come out too? Still waiting for my water to boil. Induction stove top, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the good old fashions work. Uh, we'll check some of these. Uh, what, is a large what is a large container of liquid for the poke? Is there a larger container for that or could they be mistaking? Do you remember how it was packed? package, someone was asking the large container of liquid for the poke. Was there something or was that for the seafood boil? Yeah, the, probably uh, mistaking the, that. the broth was the, uh, it's for the boil, it's for the seafood boil. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about some of these ingredients here while we wait for everyone's water to get boiling here. Um, so you have uh, shrimp, fresh uh, shrimp from Kauai. Mm -hmm. uh, it's farm raised on Kauai. Um, they're huge. They yeah. take the whole plate. <laughs> nice. They're, re they're really good. We, we always like um, working with uh, their shrimp. We feel it's uh, you know, very consistent and very, um, uh, a lot better than um, you know, the shrimp that other shrimp, frozen shrimp. Yeah. Uh, and then you got some clams. Uh, these are Yukon gold potatoes. Mm. Um, corn is again from uh, Twin Bridge Farms on the North Shore. Uh, you got a mixture of andouille sausage and Portuguese sausage. Portuguese sausage is from uh, Kukui, mm -hmm. uh, um, made here in Honolulu, and then uh, some carrots. Lots of good local. And how long did it take to make the stock or the broth? Is it good? Um, kind of took all day for us. Yeah. <laughs> <yesterday>. <laughs> we get the shortcut. Yeah. We get the ready made to go. So this is a chicken broth that we made. Um, then we got some uh, garlic inside. Uh, I put a little jalapeno just to spice it up a little bit mm. and uh, we'll season it with salt. And, uh, we're gonna add, you should have a, a spice packet. We, it has um, paprika, mm -hmm. uh, chili flakes, and roasted or garlic chips inside. Okay, we're gonna add that. It's, it's, All right, I have a question, Sharon Bill. There is a second small container that was with poke. It smells like vinegar, liquid sauce, large container of red sauce. This one What's here? It? This would be our, oh, our okay. hot sauce. Oh, so this would be for the, um, to use for the seafood boil after. Okay. You know, you can use it as a dipping sauce for your seafood, right. or a compliment or a condiment as a to eat with your seafood. They got it, hot sauce there too. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, oh, Todd Apo, hi Todd, joining us again. We're supposed to add both containers of broth already, or just one? With uh, the both, and then add some water. Thank you. Yeah, get your questions Look, in, everyone. There, or <laughs> here, okay. All right. And then, oh, yes, someone was asking if we could send the full recipes to. What are the scooped balls? Dessert, should we preheat oven? This is Michelle's department. That's a surprise. <laughs> um, you can't, 
I can't do a virtual cook along and drink along without dessert. So if you want, you can preheat your oven to 325. 325. There you go. Uh oh. <laughs> Todd says his lobster is getting restless. Must know what's coming up. Yeah, they're moving up. <laughs> they're moving around. Can we get started? I think we can get started. All right. Let's say Sharon and Bill, are you guys ready? Yes. And by the way, it is National Cookie Day, too. So, oh. homemade cookie day. So, we get a special treat with Michelle throwing a little something sweet for you. Okay, Sharon and Bill are ready. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to add the, the, the spice packet or the spice. That is the one that's the red pepper. Yeah. Okay. And can you see it? Does it help if we point it? Okay, we have a close camera. You can see it. Sure. So it's gonna add some uh, spices to your the broth, mm -hmm. as well as our garlic flavor. Um, then we can drop, go ahead and drop the lobster in. Here we go. Moment Wait, of truth. Tell them how to grab the lobster. Oh. 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 oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> the cloth. Like that yes. Oh. So uh, you want to grab the lobster Very on, carefully. on the back side, versus um, anywhere you know near his claws. But uh. And they and still moving. Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Sing. Or is it still moving? Are we able, is it too heavy to point it a little bit so we can see into the camera a little bit? Yeah, I think we can see. There we go. There we go, just to see the broth. So it's a nice sort of a rust color right yeah. now with the peppers in there. Then we'll start our timer. Okay. And so roughly about uh, 10 minutes. And so after a few minutes, we're gonna add um, the sausage, mm -hmm. and then wait a couple minutes. We'll add the the clams and the shrimp, and then we'll finish. Or then we'll add your the potatoes are uh, partially boiled, and as well as the carrots. Um, this to kind of help with the process. Speed up the process. I'm just going to pepper you with a few questions. Angela is asking, do you take off the rubber bands? Yes, yes. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, we took off our rubber bands. Uh, it, sometimes it affects the flavor of the broth, mm -hmm. or the the. The broth itself. And the spices should have been added already, yes. right? Susan said that was the red peppery yes. paprika looking thing that we added. Okay. Water not boiling, we will catch up. Okay, thank you. Dick and Quiana, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. They're trying to get boiling. Any secrets to getting it going? Just put the lid on to get things boiling quicker? Yeah, you okay. can add, add a lid to uh, help with the, mm -hmm. I guess to help speed, up. speed right. up the process a little bit. But again, so you get that going, then you put the pepper in, and once you put the lobster in, it's about eight minutes? Yeah. Before? Okay. Eight minutes total time, so at about the four minute mark, we'll add the sausage. Okay. All right. And this is, uh, so Michelle went ahead and finished the, uh, mm. the nachos. Mm -hmm. So this would be the finished great. product. How long have you been doing that at MW? <laughs> Since we opened uh, for seven years, yeah, so we've been open for about seven years now, mm -hmm. or seven and a half years, mm -hmm. and now, uh, yeah, we, it was on the opening menu. And so. 20 days, it makes our eighth anniversary. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> and what a year, too, 2020 <laughs> for restaurants, too. So <laughs> I know support. You guys do a great job with the takeouts and stuff. I know through this, too, and you're putting the extra love into that, so everyone appreciates that. No, it's a lot of credit to our, you know, our team and you know, the staff that uh, help us you know, put it all together. So. Yeah, thank you too. <laughs> we have a question. We might need to number sauces. I've noticed this is a problem too with the thing. Someone says, which sauce do I put in, Michelle? It's not, not the sauce yet, is it? Did we do the sauce? We only did the pepper, right? Or, or did you add the, the sauce? It's a hot is sauce. The That's yeah. an N. It's kind of a. The sauce would be for the end where uh, you can use as a dipping sauce or use as a condiment to eat with your seafood versus. Um, Adding, I guess you could, you could if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. If you want to spice up your broth a little bit more, okay, um, you could. And Susan says, I need written directions. Um, that's a good comment. Maybe next time we can have that to go along with it. Uh, Kuyana wants to know how long to bake the cookies. She wants to do that. You're going to wait for that? Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for that. If you put the lobster in before the water is boiling, is that bad? Um, Not the way to go. Not. It, will, it won't be bad, but it, it, you know, you, it, ideally you want to want the, the, the water to be boiling. Okay. And the so colors about, changed at the lobster. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we lift them up. So now we had 
is uh, turning a little red. And uh, we'll go ahead and start adding some of this other ingredients. Can add the sausage. So again, you have andouille sausage and kukui sausage. Mm -hmm. Kukui is Portuguese sausage. So the whole thing for, um, I guess for ideally is, you know, these are all, seafood boil is always good for like large, you know, gatherings, which, you know, is a hard to do right now, but uh, it's always good for, you know, these kind of fun gatherings where, you, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty easy. You have all your, it's a one pot deal where you can have, put all your seafood in and you dump it all out, put it all on the table and you all, everybody has fun, you know, uh, breaking down all the seafood and eating it together. So it's always a fun gathering event. Um, but obviously, pleaser. yeah, it's a little different now. We have a timer here going. I don't know if all you did. Someone asked how long after the lobster is in should we put the sausage in? We started the lobster eight minutes, about yeah. four minutes is what you Four found? minutes. After four minutes, you put the sausage in. And then another minute or so, we're going to add, start adding all the other ingredients. So we've got okay. the potatoes and carrots we can add. Mm -hmm. Okay, potatoes and carrots coming up now. And I think what's so fun about this dish is it signifies the end of summer mm. and the beginning of fall. And it's nice to be able to showcase all the different farmers in a nice seafood boil. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's see how everyone's doing there. See them over their stove. And hopefully everyone has their hot boiling water now and can play catch up too. How's it going, guys? Thumbs up if you're following along and everything's working out so far. So we got about two minutes to go. We're going to add the rest of the seafood. So you got the clams and the, the shrimp. That's going to go right into the pot. Oh, cut sausage is a question. Yes, you have them in little yes, sections, right? Yes, they should have been cut. Um, if not, then do you want to cut them into larger chunks? And that works out. On the bias. Diagonal? Yes. All right, we're almost in business. David. Oh, hi, David. David Lassner. <laughs> Just started to boil at last. Thank you. Next time we'll give you a heads up to get, <laughs> get everything boiling. Broth started first, would help. My water's still not boiling. Well, uh, as a team here, will they be able to rewatch this somehow or we get the directions too? So if you're getting a late start, yes, you will be able to. So apologies if you're not at the same timing up to where we are, you will be able and we'll send written directions to everyone following the event. How long for the sausage to rest? Is that what it says? Or this? I think that's what the question is. Right? Everything will stay into the pot and then we'll dig up everything all in one, all together in the end. So everything will stay inside. Okay. All right. Some people are playing catch up. Lobster in four minutes later, sausage, then how many minutes till the next ingredient? I think so the last two minutes, you want to add the, um, the shrimp and the clams. So once all the clams open up, um, everything should get pretty, pretty much cooked. And we'll add this. And we had the corn, the corn I mean, not the last. corn, the potatoes and the carrots before that, before yes. the clams. I think it was eight minutes for the lobster, four minutes of sausage, then two more minutes after that, and then final two minutes for the seafood. So for us here, we can, you know, you can see how the oh, clams right. are starting to open up. Mm -hmm. um, and we're almost at the completed eight minute mark. So once all the clams are opened up, we can start, basically we'll be done. <laughs> Explain to them why you want to buy lobster live. Uh, using fresh lobster, you always want to use a, a fresh lobster or live lobster um, versus something that's um, fresh and it, it, it's the, the, you, oh, there is our timer, right? Eight minutes. And then that would be our timer. Mm -hmm. So you always want to use a, a live fresh lobster versus um, something that's 
already, uh, I guess, dead. How long is it like that if, if someone were to go buy it? Oh, say, it kind of, I guess it would depend on the, 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 the places. The, so, yeah. Do we need to purge the clams is a question. Oh, we, we did purge them if you, if you got them from us. But if you did buy them uh, from the store yourself, then you probably want to purge them, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Susan, sorry, her daughter freaking out about the live lobster going in. She's probably thinking, Sebastian. Oh, no. Need a disclaimer for this. So we, can, um, we can start digging everything out. We'll start with the lobster. And what's your preferred way to serve this once everything's done? Um, we have a, like, you want a, like a large, probably a large um, pan of some sort or a platter. Okay. That uh, you want to spread everything out. <laughs> you want to make sure all your seafood is uh, cooked. So the shrimp should be cooked already. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, the clams. You want to just want to make sure they're all open. Someone was asking, what does purging clams mean? Uh, usually, you'll, how you do it wash them and let them sit in water for a second so they they release all their the Any dirt sand and, or uh, anything like and, that okay and sand inside any other questions uh, mickey says they named their lobster louie <laughs> <laughs> let us know how you like your wine by the way too okay and the instructions are up the times. Wow, that looks beautiful, the colors too. Can people put other seafood in if they have a favorite or is there something that doesn't really work for a seafood boil? Oh, definitely. Um, calamari, mm -hmm. uh, scallop, or scallops would work. Mm -hmm. um, any other, uh, you know, different sausages that uh, you, you would like or you have a favorite type of sausage or meat. Um, Sometimes with the corned beef, corned beef inside, mm -hmm. it just adds adds to the whole, you know, experience. Um, and the Yukon crab, gold potatoes, crab, oh, crab definitely, would work. Crab definitely um, would work. And then I like always uh, utilizing the broth after. Mm. With everything getting cooked inside, you know, it always develops a nice flavorful broth. So you could use this uh, or you can serve it together with as like a little soup chub, or like we'll take this and sometimes make like gumbo or mm. chowder or mm. uh, just, yeah. You need that recipe too, if you like a <laughs> bonus. <laughs> and actually one of my favorite ways that he does it, the seafood boil as well is instead of using the spice packet or the spice mix, he does a lemongrass one. Oh. Which is amazing. Mm. So he uses lemongrass and ginger Turmeric and galangos, so some more like more that Thai, Vietnamese um, mm -hmm. influence. Mm -hmm. Like a tom kha or something yeah. like that, with the flavors. That's great. Let's see if anyone has a question. Oh no, someone's lobster's trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going at home, everyone? You guys Shoot. looking like that? Should we show them how to crack it open? Yes, yes, any tips on that would be helpful. <gasps> Proper way to get into the seafood. Oh, six participants raised hands. Let's see if I can check this. Okay. Question? Or uh, just seeing some people have comments about their water still waiting for it to boil. Um, and Dave, David C says hi, Wade and Michelle. So good to see you guys again. Hi. And Mickey put their lobster in the freezer for a little bit before to make it more docile. Do you recommend <laughs> doing that? <laughs> yeah, you got to calm them down a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we do have a question for Paul. Maybe this is what you're getting for. They're asking the best way to cut the lobster. To yes, it. we're going to get to right. that right now. Perfect. So while everyone else gets caught up with the water boiling and so forth, we'll continue to show. And we do have the step-by-step -step directions listed in the chat. So you have your lobster here. Um, 
you can uh, crack the claws off. Then we can clean those claws separately. Um, you have two, I guess, a couple options here. We can uh, remove the tail. And then simply you can just squeeze squeeze the tail and then uh, then open it up. And then your lobster will pop right out. A lot of times this is all in the head part. You got a lot of the good juices. Um, and for the claw, it's nice to gently you twist the, I guess what the, the, the Pinch a part of it and lightly just mm -hmm. shimmy it out and take a knife. I have a quick question. Paul is asking, saying lobster was in for eight minutes. It did not completely turn red. The claws still have a little black. Is it okay to take them out or do you think they need to leave it in? Uh, you can let it go a little longer. Okay. So you have a nice claw here. Why do you use the back of the knife? Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't want to damage your, uh, the good side of it, the, mm -hmm. the blade side. So you can save your blade time. <laughs> <laughs> The same with the other side. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm socially distancing from the juicy lobster too. Closest thing to playing with your food, right? Yeah. <laughs> Now, is it frowned upon to have like the bib afterwards? You know, you go to some of those restaurants and you tuck in so you don't get the seafood juices all they over. They usually give you those at the, you know, the, where you, wherever you get uh, Some of the mainland seafood places, right? It gets the, you know, the juices, the flying juices. Who does most of the cooking at home between you two? Or you guys, is that the last thing you want to do? I always yeah, like to know, does he? <laughs> there you have it. The... Oh. All right. Oh, that's a lot of nice meat right there. Do you actually serve this ever on the menu? What do you do? Um, we've done it for our takeout. Mm. We've done a mm -hmm. couple times for our takeout um, that we had offered, but uh, not usually as far as uh, on our regular menu. But mm -hmm. here you go, Tanya. Oh, do I get to try it? <laughs> Is anyone else this far along at home too? I'd love to see what you have. Oh, we have. See, I have a few raised hands. Is that a question up here? I'm not sure if I can get. Let's see. Marty, do you have a question? If you do, I could ask you to unmute yourself, Marty, if you'd like to ask a question. Marty, who else has a question? Sarah, I don't see. Esmin and Angela. If anyone wants to ask a question, and Kuyana. Okay, Marty, you want to unmute and ask your question? Let's see if we can hear you. I see your hand is still up. If not, I can see them in chat. Sometimes there's a little bit of delay on the Zoom, the Zoom life. So if someone wants to ask a question, send it in the chat message. Oh, Marty doesn't have a question. He's just raising his hand. He's just <laughs> <laughs> raising the roof here. If anyone has a question, let us know. Oh, what is the orange liquid sauce Vicky's asking? That's the hot sauce. This, is, this would be the hot sauce. Okay. 
that um, our sous chef has prepared. We call it the hot rod sauce. Uh, our sous chef, we, his nickname is Roddy, so we call it the hot rod. I like it. Do, you, do you bottle that and sell it? Yeah. I mean, we actually sell it for um, it, 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 on our takeout menu. Oh, I like hot. There we go. <laughs> Any other questions? I'd like to see. Does anyone want to show show off your lobster? Have you tried to cut it or anything? No. It's hard to see. We have so many people joining. Thanks for joining, by the way, too. This is the second one. Calvin, yours is awesome. Cassidy, oh, Paul is saying. <laughs> great. Oh, yeah, look at that. See that right there? That looks great. Nice. Very nice. Yes. Maria Carl's looks good. Oh, Paul. Paul's asking, what are the nacho chips made of? Is it wonton wrapper? No, those are wonton piece. Yeah, wonton wrapper. Specially made here for this dish? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes, wonton. And how's everyone doing? Catching up in time? Oh, and I get to try this too. Should I try? How, how do I go in? What's the best way to eat this? Just a little bit, <laughs> however I want to. Yeah, yeah, you can do this spoon. With this spoon? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Are these, these are okay? All right, I'm gonna try the lobster. If you wanna try the hot sauce. Oh, like I do like hot sauce. Okay, <laughs> yeah. how much? Can I pour some on? All right, here goes. The hot rod sauce. Okay, sorry, it's a little dripping. You know, it's always hard to eat on camera. I have to do this all the time in my job. I still haven't figured out a graceful way to do it, especially this is a nice piece of lobster. I'm going to go in for that. All right. Okay, here's the awkward part. Mm. Very good. I always like the broth to be a little mm. spicy, you know, well-seasoned. Um, you can also add a little lemon juice. Yeah, but, what uh, does that do? It's just uh, with just seafood to bring out yeah, the flavors? Bring out the flavors of the seafood. Um, acid, uh, acid is always good with um, you know, some seafood. This seafood. goes really well. Yeah. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck knew what he was doing. <laughs> oh, is it possible to? Oh, no. All my clams fell out of their shell. That's OK, right? Yeah, it's OK. It's the flavor. Mm -hmm. And anyways? Can we repost the recipe? Someone is still behind. Holly's behind. Benjamin's asking, we don't need our oven, do we? Well, for this special treat. 325? 325. Okay. This is delicious. We have some more too. So again, is, um, you're trying to time everything so that all the seafood cooks perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you wanted to, you could do it one at a time, but it just, you know, I like it to where it's uh, timing everything so that all the seafood collectively pulling everything out. That's a great time. way to do yeah. it too. So makes it all easier. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> There's a joke. Christine says, our lobster looks like our president. <laughs> <laughs> wow, everything's so good. Oh, Megan, that looks good. Christine. Looks like a cakey there joining Maria Carl. How's it going, Bob? How's your, how's your seafood boil? Bob Harrison. There, of course. <laughs> Mickey looks like they're getting caught up too. And if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to. This is all delicious though. <laughs> he said, so most of the seafood besides the lobster taking eight minutes, everything else generally the last two minutes. Would that be if you put a fish or a scallop um, into? Or? If you put a, you just want to time it if it's a larger piece of, uh, say like a whole crab, you probably want to put it uh, at the same time as the lobster. Um, calamari will be re relatively pretty quick, uh, as well as uh, scallops will probably take a couple minutes. Okay. So you just want to time everything so that in the end, everything comes out all together. That's the key too. Tell us about this special thing. I, I'm sorry if people are still working on their seafood boil, but we have something uh, added bonus here for Michelle. So inside your kits, we have um, MW Glamour's cookies. Mm -hmm. And I always say that you can't come to MW and not have my Glamour's cookies. And so we want, today is such a special day to be able to cook with all of you. And we have wanted to celebrate by making Grandma's cookies mm -hmm. and you guys enjoying it at your house. So basically in the kit, there are four cookies. Um, there is one gluten allergy, but you have a fudge brownie cookie oh, and you're okay. gonna cook it the same, but it just doesn't um, contain gluten, okay? So you're just gonna take the balls and then you're gonna put it onto a 
baking sheet. And then basically, all you do is you're going to take your hand and then kind of smash it down. Did grandma do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the part I got to do. <laughs> that was the fun part. It was like playing with Play-Doh. Okay. And then you're just going to smash it down. And then you're going to put it in the oven for 16 minutes. And that was a quick 16 minutes, oh, but we have cookies. <laughs> Look at that. Is this a special family recipe that you would never give out? Uh, no, anyone, if you ask me, I'll be happy to give you the recipe. Um, this cookie was made for the restaurant because one of the, growing up, I always enjoyed cooking with my grandma. Mm. And it was a special treat. Her signature cookie was an oatmeal raisin cookie. And honestly, I don't like raisins. <laughs> So I did it with um, chocolate chip. So there's chocolate chip, macadamia nuts, cereal, and I'm missing oats. So if you are allergic to nuts, there's macadamia nuts inside. All right, and there's everyone saying thank you, Dave and Michelle. Sharon and Belle did a great job with theirs. Everyone else, how's it coming along? Please send us a cookie recipe. This <laughs> <request>. Of course. <laughs> and we'd love it if you take pictures and hashtag HFWF20 and hashtag cook and drink along as well. The cookies too. Will you guys join me in a cookie? Of sure, course. of course. Okay. I love these. <laughs> Good thing I, I ran today with a <laughs> Hawaiian Airlines holo holo <laughs> challenge. So oh, wonderful. I got my three and a half miles. So I can do this. All right, so cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a cereal on here too? Mm -hmm. So what kind of cereal? It's actually, um, it's a more of a French style golf bread cookie. Hmm. So we call it creatine, but if you don't have creatine, I use cornflakes. Cornflakes. Which is a good substitute. Hmm. Can we get cookies again, directions? Sharon and Bill, we think we can get you this. <laughs> Some other people did the holo holo challenge too. It's great, another virtual thing we're doing. We're <laughs> trying to run or get 50 to 130 miles in. Everyone's seafood boil. You see some that look great? Look at that. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Colleen. Anyone have any questions too? Uh oh, Cassidy is saying, are you open for dine-in right now or only takeout? Because they need some more MW food. They need their fix. <laughs> so uh, right now we're only open for takeout. Okay. Um, it looks uh, that probably till next year. Probably until next year, at least. Oh, next yeah. year, wow. So 2021, yeah. whatever the tiers are, that's yes. the best way for you. Okay. All right, so support. Make sure that you get takeout from Michelle and Wade. Keep supporting them. Oh, baking it for 16 minutes. That was the magic time, right? Yes. If you want them a little chewy, like my brother loves chewy cookies, I would do maybe like 14 minutes. Mm, okay. That's a secret tip. And Benjamin's asking, could you explain how to open the lobster one more time? We don't have any seafood crackers in our home. And you were kind of doing it with the knife as well, right? Um, we so you want to take the tail. You can simply take the tail and uh, the head and just kind of twist. And the, ta the tail should pop off. Um, at that moment, you uh, have the, the main part of the shell facing down in your palm of your hand. And if you just squeeze to, to it cracks, you should be able to open it back up as a, by banging it the opposite direction. And um, the, the shell should simply just open up and you can pull, peel the, uh, pull the meat out. You should be able to pull the meat out uh, quite simply. Anything else you want to add about this? Um, no, like I said, you know, it's, they're always, it's always a, a a fun um, thing to have for like family gatherings or uh, or a potluck or something where um, you can have a big pot um, and all the seafood you know simply just timing everything with the all the seafood and you um, digging everything out and they're dumping it all on the table mm -hmm. and it's always fun to um, have that kind of uh, feast. <laughs> well it looks great and then we finish out of that the Adi Poke nachos and grandma's Mm -hmm. I agree with you on the raisins. I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah, someone's. I think that's it. Anyone have any questions? Let us know. Vicky has three crackers. She's still 
for crackers for the lobster still cooking but uh, everyone's else enjoying theirs how do you like the wine everyone by the way it's a nice oh yeah mm. Uh, Works well with the, the, yeah. the seafood. You know, I was curious is the challenges of cooking for an airline and preparing things for that. That's a whole different set, trying to yeah. prepare something, <laughs> right? <laughs> it is a whole different uh, challenge, you know, to, to try and figure out what works best uh, um, to serve in the airlines because, um, you know, uh, so a lot of times uh, comfort food, comfort foods work really well. Um, you know, that, that seems to be what uh, people enjoy the most. Um, I guess because you're uh, in, you know, on the airlines, you, you just want something homey and um, to kind of help you get some rest and yeah, so that always works, seems to work uh, the best when we're working with airlines. Yeah, great job, great job back there too. Uh, Nian says, mahalo away to Michelle. Uh, time to eat. <laughs> oh, what do you do with the sauces? What do you do with sauces? Uh, so you can use the sauce as a dipping sauce um, to for your seafood, as well as to eat with the the, the, the corn, the, the potatoes, and the carrots as well. Um, but yeah, you, you can just use it like a condiment. Perfect. And if you like hot, it's called a hot rod. Clark's asking if you have a paella dish. Yes, we do. We we you will run that um, occasionally on our menu. Uh, for takeout as well as uh, when we were open for dine-in, so um, yeah, uh, I guess you can keep on the lookout. Maybe we'll run it next week. Sharon and Bill says, "Oh my God, the sauce! We need three times this container. Yum! This is the hot, rod, the yeah. hot rod sauce. There we go. Everything is delicious, but my mouth is on fire." Says Susan. <laughs> that's a good thing. Well, that's okay. We have we yeah, have some. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta drink Shell more wine. seeker right here. <laughs> Anyone else have any more questions or trying to play catch up here or any comments, let us know. Oh, uh, Benjamin's asking, we found black little balls inside our lobster or those eggs, do we eat that? That would probably be the uh, lobster roll. Um, mm -hmm. If you cook them again, or you can simply dip it back into the, the hot broth, um, they'll turn red. That's, that would be the lobster, uh, the roll. And uh, Bob says, super fun, excited to eat. Signing off so we don't scare people while we're eating. Thanks, everyone. Tons of um, aloha, Bob and Lori. So great to have you here. Thanks for your support of the Hawaii Thank you. Wine Festival, oh, always you. one of the great sponsors here. <laughs> yeah. And anyone else? Can the broth be used for other dishes? Yes. Um, so we, we, in the restaurant, we'll, we'll turn it a lot of times and turn it into a soup. Um, so you could make like a gumbo or uh, make like a, a seafood stew. Um, simply if you had leftovers, you could pick all the meat out, um, put it back into the broth and then save it for um, the next day. Or um, chowder, it would make a good chowder. Um, but yeah, risotto as well. So yes, you would want to save the broth and always um, use it. Uh, it's got a lot of good flavor inside. It does, it does. All right, everyone's really enjoying and saying thank you. Mahalo, Michelle, Wade, and Chuck. We're off to wine and dine. Susan says thank you, and Amber says this is awesome. Thank you so much. My neighbors and I are well fed tonight. <laughs> oh, is it smash the dough? Yes, <laughs> that's the best way. <laughs> smash the dough. Is that just fun to do, or does it help evenly cook it better? What's the? Um, it helps to make it crispy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and my mom loves crispy cookies. And same with me. So I always tend to flatten them. And it, it keeps its texture for a while. OK, there you go. If you have questions there, everyone saying mahalo. I think we're close to uh, wrapping up here. Any you know, final thoughts that you want to tell people just for joining in? No, well, thank you very much for uh, to food and, the Food and Wine Festival, and uh, thank you to you as well, uh, Denise, uh, Chuck, as well. You know, uh, we just love we always love being a part of the, these fun events. So thank you very much. No, thank you, and please go out and help support the local businesses and the local restaurants. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I want to remind you, you can get tickets. There are some different events planned for Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. Are you going to be involved in any more of the events coming up? Or have they got a different yes. schedule? Um, yes, we are. Uh, we're, so we're, we're 
November 14th, uh, it's going to be a dinner uh, at the um, 53 by the Sea mm -hmm. uh, in a collaboration with uh, Rafael Luneta and uh, Lance Kosaka. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And actually, the next Cook and Drink Along is going to involve Lance Kosaka and Jen Ackroll doing a steak and bourbon. So that's coming up October 29th. So do you like bourbon? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anything with alcohol. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like most chefs, too. All right. Mahalo, this event was super fun, says Sharon and Bill. Thank you, guys. And happy anniversary, Kristen and Jonathan. What a cool way to celebrate the 12th anniversary. Oh, yeah. so, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Check you out HawaiiFoodAndWineFestival.com for all the events. A lot of great things coming up. And, of course, it supports food go go They're working on as well. Hashi Life. So many ways to find out about the great people behind the food that's grown, raised, and caught here and how to continue to support the restaurant industry but thank you michelle and wade for oh, inviting us yeah. into the kitchen and <laughs> sharing you. your expertise thank you thank you all right thank you. cheers one more time cheers. everyone cheers. cook and drink along hopefully you enjoyed whining and dining <laughs>